Have you ever had a time when life has caught you by surprise and it just turned your world upside down and inside out? I think a lot of us are living in that kind of time right now. Where a few weeks ago we were just living life, things were unfolding, we had our schedules planned and everything was on schedule. And, and mid-February, the stock market was hovering just under 30,000. And in a few weeks, boom, major hit. See, when life catches us by surprise, those things that we have put our trust and hope in, when those things begin to shake, it can cause a lot of anxiety, fear, despondency in us. And that's why we have to make sure that our Faith is beyond the stock market, beyond the job, beyond the career. And sometimes those shakings can come in our families, in our marriages, in our singleness. Some of my senior high schoolers were planning for the prom and the, the cut day when they go out and play hooky, and all that's been wiped off the calendar. So none of us at any age are exempt when life comes at us so fast and so hard that those things that we have hoped in and trusted in, when they begin to shake, can cause us to doubt our faith. And that's why we have to make, sure, make certain of what our faith is in. And as we look at today's passage, we'll see that the disciples who are following Jesus Christ are immediately thrust into an unprecedented situation, a perilous situation that shakes their faith. And for our text this morning, we want to look at Mark chapter 4, Mark chapter 4, verses 35 through 41. Mark chapter 4, verse 35 through 41. It begins as follows. On that day, when evening had come, he said to them, let us go across to the other side. And leaving the crowd, they took him with them in the boat, just as he was. And other boats were with him. And a great windstorm arose, and the waves were breaking into the boat so that the boat was already filling, but he was in the stern, asleep on the cushion, and they woke him and said to him, Teacher, do you not care what we are, that we are perishing? And he awoke and rebuked the wind and said to the sea, Peace, be still. And the wind ceased. And there was a great calm. And he said to them, why are you so afraid? Have you still no faith? And they were filled with great fear and said to one another, who then is this that even the wind and the sea obey him? May God add a blessing to the reading and the hearing of his word. As we think about, for a little while, keep the faith. Keep the faith. Keep the faith. Our scripture text today is the time when Jesus has been teaching and with the crowds and at the end of the day, he tells his disciples, let's go to the other side of the Sea of Galilee, which is really a lake. And I've had the privilege of sailing across the Sea of Galilee about three times, and it's a huge lake. But it's 700 feet below sea level, and 
it succumbs to strong winds and storms just out of the blue. This is such an occasion that what happens that these disciples on that day following Jesus, they find themselves in a storm. And as I look at that verse 35 in particular, it reads, it begins, and I must put a pause there, pump the brakes right there, on that day. Not on any day or on a day, but on that day. And if we just look into that for a moment, it tells me that on that day, a day that caught the disciples by surprise, but on that day, that day never catches Jesus by surprise. And in our lives, what happens is, yes, there are things that catch us by surprise, but it never catches Jesus by surprise. And that's why if you think about it, most times when I end the service, I'll, in the prayer, I'll say something like, we don't know what the week will hold, but we know who holds the week. Well, it's the Lord Jesus. God holds the week. And maybe I could say it like this for this particular sermon. We don't know what the day will hold, but we know who holds the day. The Lord Jesus Christ, because he is omniscient, he's all-knowing, he knows Every day, what's going to happen in our lives? We may not. Oh, we can have our schedules, our appointments, but they can be washed away in a moment. But it never catches God by surprise. When you go to the doctor's office and the doctor tells you something you don't want to hear, well, it catches you by surprise, and we're stunned in the moment. But my friends, it never catches God by surprise. That ought to give you hope and encouragement that it, nothing catches God by surprise. Matter of fact, we can re remind you of James chapter 4, verse 13 through 15. Come now, you who say, today or tomorrow we will go into such and such a town and spend a year there and trade and make a profit. Verse 14, yet you do not know what tomorrow will bring. We don't know what tomorrow will bring. We know what we've planned and what we hope will happen, but we really don't know. What is your life? For you are a mist that appears for a little time and then vanishes. Instead, here's how we ought to live life, you ought to say, if the Lord wills, we will live and do this or that. My friends, the reality of what has happened with this COVID-19, with this coronavirus, it reminded us, uh, sometimes like a cold cup of water being thrown on us, that we are not in control. But God is in control, and he knows our going out and our coming in, and so we can trust in the Lord with a whole heart. And so when we make our plans, we ought to say, well, I can, I'll go to this dinner, I'll go to this appointment, I'll go to this conference, I'll make this trip, I'll go on this vacation, if the Lord wills. I'll have graduation, I'll have my prom, if the Lord wills. And therefore, we put it on, in God's hands because, my friends, God is in control. And that will give you confidence and to encourage you in the storm for those of us who are followers of the Lord Jesus Christ. Now, look at this. Not only on that day, a day which God did not catch God by surprise, when evening had come, he said to them, let us go across to the other side. And leaving the crowd, they took him with them in the boat just as he was. And other boats were with him. Verse 37, and a great windstorm arose, and the waves were breaking into the boat. So the boat was already filling. Now, some of these disciples were fishermen. So they've experienced strong winds and storms. But on this particular day, on that day, 
this storm comes out of nowhere, and it's like no storm they've ever seen. It's an unprecedented storm, bigger than they've ever experienced, tougher than they've ever experienced, more ferocious than they've ever experienced, and their boat is filling with water. Now, back up for a moment, because these disciples, don't miss this, these disciples haven't done anything wrong. They have been obedient to the commands, to the direction of the Lord Jesus Christ. Wow. And say, we can rationalize, well, well, gee, if someone's being disobedient, they ought to be in a storm. But here, these disciples, no. They are smack dab in the middle of God's will, because Jesus told them, let's get in the boat and go to the other side. Mm. See, that'll mess with some people's street corner theology. Because some, some people say, well, if you're doing everything right and you're right with God, then you, everything ought to be a bowl of cherries, smooth sailing ahead. See, that's, again, street corner crackerjack theology. But real theology tells us, wow, that even following the Lord Jesus Christ sometimes leads us to a storm. Mm. Again, these disciples were obedient to the Lord, and they still find themselves in a storm. Now, sometimes... People who are disobedient, yes, they find themselves in a storm. We, under, we can understand that. And, but not every storm that we go into is because of disobedience. But now, if, in, just in case, if you find yourself in a troubling situation or tough time and you're not certain, well, gee, I'm, I'm okay with God. I, I've, I've confessed my sins and everything. Well, do a double check anyhow. Go back and check your sins and confess your sins and but, and if that's okay, then realize that there's another purpose afoot of why God's got you going through a storm. These disciples find themselves in the midst of a storm. Had done anything wrong. But catch us now. As followers and believers in the Lord Jesus Christ, there are times that we will find ourselves in a storm, not because of anything we've done wrong, but just because we're followers of the Lord Jesus Christ. Yeah. That doesn't mean we run from the storm. Doesn't mean that God is angry with us or just arbitrary and capricious. But as a follower of Jesus Christ, on this planet, because there's evil in the world, and because sometimes God's teaching us some things, we will find ourselves in a storm just because we're following the Lord Jesus Christ. For example, sometimes when you tell someone that, that's an unbeliever or that you're a believer in Jesus Christ, they might look at you funny and strange and ignore you. That's why sometimes on your jobs, some of you never mention that you're a follower of Jesus Christ because you're afraid, I may not get that promotion, may not get that assignment, may, get, may not get invited to the party. Yeah. You're like secret agent believers. Yeah. It's because, you know, it'll cost you sometimes for being a believer in the Lord Jesus Christ. Oh, I, I find myself in a storm sometimes when I tell people that God defined marriage as one man, one woman. There are people who bring a storm against me. Mm. When I tell people that life, human life is sacred inside and outside the womb, oh, you should see the looks I get sometimes. 
But see, when you stand for the Lord, sometimes, every now and then, you will find yourself in a storm. But I, if I got to be in a storm, I'd rather be in the storm with Jesus than without Jesus. Amen? Yeah. Don't be afraid of the storm. Just make sure that Jesus is with you in the storm. Now, we may not always like the storm, and sometimes the storm can make you angry. I'm sure now that some of the high schoolers and college students that have been forced to come home and parents are not working outside the home now and families, maybe the home is getting to be a tight space and, and the anxiety and the anxiousness maybe sometimes you know, it brings on grieving and we do grieve our losses and one of the aspects of grieving brings up anger. But we have to be careful in the season that, that not to sin in our anger. Matter of fact, the Bible tells us in your anger, Ephesians 4.26 says, be angry and do not sin. Do not let the sun go down on your anger. So some things will make us angry, my friends, but don't sin in your anger. And some of you might be angry because your schedule's been turned upside down, inside out, and, but the boundary for your anger is not to sin. And therefore, you might need to go to God in prayer. God, help me with my anger that I'm angry inside. I'm not talking right to my mom or dad. I'm frustrated. I'm short in conversation with people. You might need to go to God in prayer and say, God, help me to control my anger. See, see, don't let anger ride you. You ride the anger, and you keep it in control, amen? Don't be destructive in your anger. See, that gives a foothold to the devil, and, and he seeks to ruin and rule your life. And maybe in addition to praying, maybe there's someone you need to talk to, amen? Yeah, to talk through your anger, to bring down the temperature. And as you trust in God more and more and more, that'll help bring down the anger. Yeah. Because sometimes, even following the Lord Jesus Christ leads us into a storm. Again, this is a great windstorm that's unprecedented to them. But my friend, sometimes you and I might find ourselves in a storm as well. As we follow the Lord Jesus Christ, the good shepherd, the Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He leadeth me every day. Yes. Know that God never leaves you or forsakes you. Matter of fact, as we look at another point, these disciples, they're in this ferocious storm that's caught them by surprise. They've done nothing wrong. They're following the Lord Jesus Christ. Verse 38, but he was in the stern, asleep on the cushion, and they woke him and said to him, teacher, do you not care that we are perishing? And he awoke and rebuked the wind and said to the sea, peace be still. And the wind ceased and the great calm was there. And he said to them, why are you so afraid? He's talking to the disciples. Have you still no faith? See, when storms come in our lives, my friends, be careful I'm going to use this, this phrase that uh, kind of popular right now, but in a different context. But w when you're in a storm, a friends, you've got to stay woke in a storm. And that word woke has to do with being attentive, being aware of what's really going on. So when you see the storm on the horizon, and you might be in the middle of a storm, stay woke in the storm. It's not the time for you to hide. It's not the time for you to be overwhelmed by the storm itself. But stay woke in a storm. Stay aware. Stay attentive. Keep your eyes on the Lord. 
See, the enemy would like to use a storm to discourage you and to distract you away from the Lord Jesus Christ, to get you off your game, to get you away from your faith in the Lord Jesus Christ. See, in the storm, all those things you had your faith in, if you had your faith in the stock market, you're in a storm right now. If you had your faith in your job right now, you're in a storm. If you had your faith in your rhythm, your routine, the sports and, and school, you're in a storm right now. But stay woke in the storm. That's why your faith can't be in yourself and your schedule. Your faith must be in the Lord Jesus Christ. Not faith in stuff, not faith in things, but faith in the Lord Jesus Christ. Because everything else is sinking sand. He's the solid rock, the rock that won't roll. Stay woke in a storm. These disciples are losing it, my friends. It's almost as if they didn't quite grasp who Jesus was and his purpose that's going to succeed no matter how big the storms are. And they forgot that they were with Jesus. So what if he was napping? Mm. My friends, you got to stay woke in a storm. Mm. When you're in a storm, keep your eyes on the Lord Jesus Christ. On another occasion, when they're in another storm or in the midst of the night, Jesus comes to them walking on the water, and Peter gets out of the boat at Jesus' command and comes walking on the water toward Jesus. But what happens? Another storm arises, and Peter gets his eyes off Jesus, and Peter begins to sink. My friends, stay woke when you're in a storm because the enemy wants to sink you. The enemy wants to drown you. The enemy wants you to be discouraged and distracted. But stay woke. I know you're sitting at home with somebody. If you are, tell your neighbor, neighbor, stay woke in a storm. It's not time to get distracted. Mm. So keep your eyes on the Lord Jesus Christ. Because the enemy will put you in the grip of grief. But stay woke. Know that God has promised never to leave you or forsake you. Some of you have friends that when everything's going well, they'll be around you. When you're a lot of money in your pocket, they'll be there with you. But let something happen. Your friends will depart from you. Mm. But the Lord says, I'll never leave you or forsake you. Even in a storm, God is with you in the storm. If I got to go through a storm, I want to make sure that Jesus is with me in the storm. Amen? Because all the ground is sinking sand. Amen. He's the solid rock. Stay woke in a storm. Mm. See, there's some visible and invisible things going on. Visibly, they can see the storm. Visibly, we can see the storms. Visibly, we can see the results of the coronavirus. Coronavirus. But stay woke in the storm. Keep your eyes on the Lord. Mm. See, the more faith we have in the Lord, the less our anxieties will overwhelm us, the less our fear will direct us, but we got to keep our faith in the Lord Jesus Christ, especially when we're in the storm. Yeah. When everything else around us is shaking, the Lord don't shake. He does the shaking. He allows the shaking going on. And rem see, this is the times that to stay woke is that that's why we prepare when things are calm. That's why we do Bible studies in Sunday school and read the Bible and study the Bible because we know that eventually a storm is coming. And it's those things that we have taught and learned that will sustain us in the storm. We stay in the Word. That's why it's good to know more and more about God, and God is faithful, 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 faithful is our Lord. He's faithful on the sunny days, and he's faithful on the stormy days. He knows our 
going out and are coming in, a lot lying down and are raising up. God, my friends, is faithful. He knows when the sparrow falls to the ground. And my brothers and sisters, you are more valuable than any old sparrow. He knows every hair on your head. Mm. He knows your name. Stay woke in a storm. Yes. And then remember those things that you've been in in the past those storms of the past and how God brought you through those storms in the past, that will give you strength for your current storm. Amen? Yes, God is with you, but we've got to stay woke. And 1 Peter 5 and 8 tells us, be self-controlled and alert. Your enemy, the devil, prowls around like a roaring lion looking for someone to devour. See, the enemy wants to get you off your game, wants to distract you. Turn you away from your faith, but keep your faith in the Lord Jesus Christ because he's brought you a mighty long way. Amen? Remember what God has done for you in the past. Don't have spiritual amnesia. Think about some of you. Think about where you've come from. Think about some of the tight situations you've been in that you couldn't buy your way out, couldn't talk your way out. Mm. Some of you have been in foxholes and wars, and, and you're still standing today. God has brought you. Some of you, maybe sometimes in the past, maybe your marriages were in a shambles, and now things are going well. Maybe in some of your parenting, things weren't going well, and now look at it, how God has blessed you. It's some of the best relationships you can ever have right now with your children. What I'm trying to say, God has brought you a mighty long way. And if you're home right now, give somebody a high five. If you don't want to touch somebody, give God an air five. Yeah, go ahead and give God an air five. Yeah. But remember how far God has brought you. My friends, he's El Shaddai. He's almighty God. Don't forget who God is. And your faith must be in the Lord if you want to successfully navigate the storms. And and, and, and I was talking to one of my Navy friends, and something that caught my eye, it says that Jesus was in the stern. Now, now, I didn't know, but I had to call one of my Navy guys and say, because I'm a a land lover, okay? I, I don't jump out of good airplanes, and I don't spend a lot of time on boats, and if I do, I'm inside with life vest on, okay? I said, what is the stern? And the brother said, well, pastor, the stern is in the back of the boat. See, Jesus is asleep in the back of the boat. Mm. Now, 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 he's the son of God, and he's asleep in the back of the boat. In this humanness, he's sleeping. But, but, but when you look at that word stern, stern is the back of the boat. Mm, mm. Look, I mean, you, some of you know where I'm going already. See, in other words, when you're heading into the storm, when you're in the storm, Jesus got your back, amen? He's got your back, amen? He knows what you're going into, and he, he's right there with you in the storm. Don't lose your faith. Maintain your faith. Let your faith grow in the midst of the storm, amen? And sometimes we grow the most when we're in a storm, amen? But remember, he's in the stern, Jesus has got your back. Amen? Amen. And then also remember that Jesus has a purpose for the storms. Yes, he does. Yes, he does. Here the disciples see, if they weren't already there, most of them weren't, it sounds like, in reading the text. But Jesus discloses who he is. He gets up and tells the ferocious storms that disciples could not handle, peace, be still. And all is quiet. And the roaring winds, they are amazed. Who is this that even the elements of the weather are? The winds and the storms and the sea listen to him. That's power. So Jesus is disclosing his power over creation. 
He's the creator and his creation listens to him. He's showing them that he is the son of God. He is showing that he is the Messiah. He is showing that he is the savior of the world and that no storm will stop God's plan. So even when you find yourself in a storm, know that you're in the will of God and that no storm will stop God's plan for your life. But we've got to remain faithful in the storm because, see, Jesus came to seek and to save the lost. He's advancing the kingdom of God. And so no storm will stop him. Yes, and even the storm on Calvary doesn't catch him by surprise when he lays there, allows himself to be nailed to a cross that all who would believe in him will have eternal life. Yes. Mm. Oh, he could have called in a legion of angels, but he does not. Because he came to seek and to save the lost, and he gives himself, he who knew no sin, takes upon himself the sins of the world. That's why for those who us, of us who believe in Jesus Christ, we can stand rightly before the Almighty God, Holy God, because we've not sinned, because we are imputed, we've been charged with, we've been cloaked with the righteousness of Jesus Christ. And then Jesus shows not only who he is, but he's bigger than any storm in our lives. My friends, we've got to Keep the faith. Don't allow fear to conquer you. We conquer fear with faith. Whether it's a virus or anything else, we conquer our fear with faith. See, Jesus is revealing more and more of who he is in the storm. Because it's in the storm that you and I will run to Jesus. We don't say, teach him, but we say, oh, Lord, call on the name of the Lord Jesus Christ in the midst of your storm. See, he reveals himself to us time and time again. My friends, we've got to trust in the Lord with our whole heart. Because our God is faithful, faithful, faithful is our Lord. And then we got to remember, he's got the whole world in his hands. He's got you and me in his hands. And the best place to be in the whole wide world is in the hands of God. And know, as Romans 8, 28 tells us, and we know that for those who love God, all things work together for good. For those who are called according to his purpose, that God's got a plan and a purpose for us even through the storm. He reveals himself to us. He, we can run to him. We see his power that he's bigger than any storm we'll ever have. So this is not the time to quake in fear, but to allow your faith to grow as you stand on the promises of God. You know, my hope is built on nothing less than Jesus' blood, my righteousness, I dare not trust the sweetest frame, but wholly lean on Jesus' name. On Christ, on Christ, on Christ, the solid rock I stand. All of the ground, all of the ground, all of the ground is sinking sand. My friends, I want to encourage you as you go through this season to know that Jesus will see you through the storm. And after you've done all that you can do, stand on the promises of God. He says, I'll never leave you or forsake you. In other words, he's saying, I got gotcha. you. I got this thing. Remember who he is. That he's brought you a mighty, mighty long way. Not to leave you. Not to forsake you. But keep trusting in the Lord. Because following Jesus Christ, we're going to be in some storms every now and then. But as long as Jesus is with us. We're okay in the storm. And we got to stay woke in the storm. We got to stay woke in the storm. And know that Jesus has a purpose for allowing us to go through the storm. And I want to encourage you 
Keep the faith. When you find yourself in the storm, keep the faith. That is the faith in the Lord Jesus Christ. Keep the faith. God bless you, my friends.